Mr. Lake. Kind of cool. Got the H10B leak detector here going. It's got the heated diode underneath here. There it is, red hot. And I'm going to take the probe. Got a uh, piercing bullet valve over here. Temporary. I got just a little bit of nitrogen and freon in there. There's no leak. Right there. Squake just a second. But I found the leak to be right along in here. Can go on this other side. This is a one and a half ton window air conditioner. I sniffed all around here, couldn't find a leak. And uh, lo and behold, the leak is right in here on one of these tubes. There's the floating ball that's in there. This has got three sensitivities on it. It's got large, medium, small leak. And I believe what it does, I believe it... Let me go in here and see what it does. I think it changes the pump, how much air it's pulling through the pump. This is a sensitivity. You turn it to a back off. Once you've used this and found a leak, there's a filter in here. It's a little white thing that's in there and that should be replaced because if you suck up any uh, oil, it'll tend to get in that little filter so you'll tend to get some false readings in there. So if you replace a little white filter in there every now and then, sometimes people do it after every job probably is good. It, uh, you'll get prevent a false reading. This little detector on here those are around probably 120 bucks to 150. Those get replaced. Some people replace them once a year. I bought this used on eBay and it's probably eight years old. I'm not sure how many hours it's got on. I've got several of these uh, good ones and junkers. And now I've got the sensitivity too high. It's just going to fire off anyways. I can turn this down. See little ball floating in there. You can also tell with this bright, bright light I've got here. You can see it's kind of wet, which is kind of a telltale sign. So I'm going to probably dry all off that with a paper towel, and then go through there, and then adjust the sensitivity to find which particular. Uh, end cap needs to be probably rebraced on there. This H10 unit here first came out in General Electric, I want to say in 1965 or 66 is the H10. Then there's a 10B, and I think there's about five or six different models. I think they sold the design off. It's sold by Yokogawa, Mars, and uh, there's two, three other brands that have the same guts and then there's some battery operated ones. The calibration leak on here uses R11 and you can buy these I think on Amazon for like 20 bucks. It's got liquid R11 which is liquid at room temperature and it has a calibrated leak that comes out of this. Once you open it up I think it lasts like a half a year. That's just to have something that you can verify this squawks. Now what happens is the diode on here ages it doesn't tend to go through and uh, be as sensitive. It'll get to where you really can't find a small leak anymore. This is the B model. I think the A model, or the one that doesn't have a B on it, the diode I think comes out of the side or you got to take it out of the, the case or something. And so what they did is they added this little cap on here so it's easy to get at the uh, heated diode. What that is is a heated diode in there. It's bringing air through the sensor by that and uh, when it goes by the heated diode 
the halogen gas goes through and uh, somehow makes it squawk with the circuit. Yeah, I may have adjusted the sensitivity on this. So I can make it squawk here. This at room temperature. To back that off, I can go over here and just kind of roughly go over here. I've got no action. Here it's just squawking because the leak is just all over the place. I'm going to back this off some. It's kind of a funky tool. Been around for like five decades, so it's a fairly bulletproof thing. Once you touch it on there, you're going to get some crap on the tip, and it's going to still tend to react. So there's a cleanliness issue that you probably should clean the tip off and then replace that little rubber piece. So right in here, one of these tubes, I've got a problem. This is a Whirlpool unit, I think from 1998. It's a pretty good unit, and then it uh, built in 2004, it says, right up in there. 18,000 BTU, so EER, I think of a 10.7, uh, which is not bad. But what's kind of funny on this, the reason I'm doing this video is, Somebody else was saying how these things always cause a leak. And then the, this thing here was put on years ago, and it's, uh, I've never found a leak around that. Sometimes you get a fairly good, you're supposed to probably go through and braze one on. And if this is completely empty or pull the refrigerant out, I probably should braze on a proper valve here and eliminate the bullet. Uh, piercing one because these things tend will uh, many cases tend to leak and so eh, sometimes it's a unit of desperation but here I'm using this piercing valve as a discovery tool and in, in order to go through and find out where there is a leak because if this is right here I can possibly get at it and rebraze on the, the tube uh, that's faulty and then go through and uh, pull a vacuum and recharge it and get this unit working again. If it's, you know, got some leak that's buried in the back or you can't get at it, it's, a lot of these are just, you know, really not worth working on sometimes. And so that's what I've got there. There's many variants of these and they vary all over the place on price used. I mean, I've got a couple I bought for 30 bucks used off eBay and they worked and other ones I paid you know, 150 and they don't work. It all really depends on the pump I don't think ever goes bad, but this diode is the key heart of the instrument. You can see in there it's heated up. If I turn it off you can see it cools down. That joker's hot. If you touch it here you're gonna burn yourself. But it plugs in there like an old-time uh, small TV tube. And it's basically pulling, I think, air through the center of that. Turn it on, see, it takes a little while for that heated diode to uh, heat up. This particular one is made by Yokogama, made in Japan, Mars. But I, GE, I think, sold the license on these things years and years ago because the original ones are made by General Electric. And the patent on this, I want to say, is from like 64, 63. Then there's some older versions of these. There's an H6 that goes back into the 60s, and an H2 and a 1 that go back into the 50s. <coughs> People either love or hate these things because you adjust the sensitivity where it squats. HL D7. I actually bought this originally to try to find some leaks. But this sucker doesn't work at all. And I don't know if it's just a bad one. It's one of these that's made in China. I'm not want to knock it too bad, but you can put the, these batteries, the ones that came with it, they charge new. It came with two sensors. I can put either sensor on, and I can go over here and 
look at this leak and it won't squawk at all on that so this thing came with a cool little case I think it was about 70 bucks but I think this is just a infant mortality dud or something um, never worked when I got it as one of those eBay deals or something I got and fooled around with it and I actually got it years and years ago to find the leak on it and put the valve on here and then charge this sucker up and then I just found the leak with this the dreaded uh, H10 dreaded these are very good instruments and you either love or hate these but they've been used for half a century and I'm not sure how they work on 410A I think they're not it's harder to find a leak but neat instrument here's the little filters the maintenance kits got these little bitty marshmallow things again those goes in the tip got the instructions this one is actually printed in 1987 and I've got some real old versions of these things and it's strange because the it's not much to go wrong on them again they vary all over the place and on eBay and then if it was a good one and somebody just you know the diode gets poisoned with time you have to go ahead and get a new sensor and that might be uh, I think the kit that's got a vial the reference vial if you want to fool around with that just to make sure it squawks and that diode I want to say is 150 180 bucks on eBay and other places I think this has got a calibrated leak rate of something like a quarter of an ounce of uh, refrigerant bring on a year Now, if you don't replace this again, that little thing in there, you'll it'll tend to. Uh, there's the ball too. Sometimes they come with a new ball. When you have a refrigerant lake like this over here, you're also going to get some oils. 